Okay, a bit of a treatment one for you today. I'm gonna to show you what I do with necks to help with rotation. Many patients that we see with neck pain are restricted in rotation. Now this might be you where you might have pain on one side, especially things like headaches, pain into your trap, into your medial scapular region. If it's on the same side, usually what happens is their rotation is restricted by somewhat on the same side. And even that can come around and give them pain down there. They might find when they go right, it's all fine, okay? And when they go left, that's when they get the tightness on that side. Now, when we mobilize that side, it's usually stiff, it's usually sore, um, and that restricts their range. Now, the secret is trying to get their range back, okay? They need to get this better, they need their range back, and they can't just force themselves, they need a bit of guidance because on that side, there's some muscle spasm and guarding, and they can't just force it themselves, it gets too sore. So we help glide it around. Now, what am I talking about? When we do this, if this is Pam here, and say we're gonna work on C2 and C3. Now, the reason we're doing C2 and C3, they do most of the rotation in the upper cervical spine. So if we go for, say, the spinous process here, what I'm doing is I'm gliding it Okay, she's gonna put a force backwards against me like a retraction force so I don't push her too far forward. But that also creates a bit of a shear glide in the joint above. So I'm gonna hold that and then help it rotate as she goes around. So it's giving a bit of a glide, but also helps rotate it around. So I can assist that movement when she rotates. Now giving that joint a bit of a glide means she doesn't have to use the muscles as much and that starts loosening it up. So, for her, what we do is get in under the skull there where her C2 is. You can feel that big bump, so we're talking about that one right there. All right, and if I get into that position there with both my thumbs, I can put one thumb on it and then one thumb over top of it. And what I'm gonna get her to do is gently push back into retraction against me. So you do that for me, Pam. So she's gonna put some pressure on. So now she's just gotta keep that pressure on. And what I do, is then I keep that pressure on as she rotates. So she's gonna rotate by herself. I'm gonna keep that pressure on behind her to facilitate that movement. And what you'll find is we get more range in the spine by doing that and then slowly come back. And of course, everyone's a little bit different, but with this one, I tend, if they're sort of rotating, their upper body tends to rotate as well. I'm gonna block them there with my knee. She's gonna try and do that again. She's gonna push back. You can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm pushing forward here. She's pushing back. And then as she rotates left, my angles go in the direction of her head. So from there, now I'm pushing that way. Okay, I'm not pushing over there, I'm pushing that way. As she rotates to the left, I'm keeping my pressure forward in the same angle. So it's in line with the facet joint. The other thing too is I'm gonna push up on a bit of an angle like that because if you'll notice, with the facet joint, it's up on an angle, okay? So I'll be pushing forward and up a little bit. And when she rotates around, I'm gonna keep that force going, okay? Now, to add a little bit of overpressure, so if she's doing well with that, if I block her here, I'm gonna be pushing forward, she's pushing back and pushing up on an angle. As she rotates around with my right hand, so you go around to the left, I'm gonna then overpress with my right hand on her chin to get a little bit of overpressure stretch in there, as long as it's not painful, okay, to come back. And that'll give her more and more and more range so she can overpress. Like I said, it stops her having to do the muscle work because she can't do that anyway because it's too sore. And that'll actually reduce some of that muscle guarding spasm. The more you sort of give that brain an understanding that you can rotate without soreness, push back again for me, um, the less guarding there is, Plus, you're actually stretching the joint. So you're actually getting movement out of that joint, which she can't get herself very effectively, and that helps improve the range, reduces the pain, allows her to do more homework. I'll be sending her home with homework, and part of that homework is, can you maintain that left rotation range? Can you go in there and do some of this for me, now that I've you up, and also use a towel and all sorts of things, to try and improve and maintain that range. So when she comes back, it hasn't retracted back to where it was again. She's actually improved it and we keep going. So this one here, you'd move, well, I move in different angles. So I'd go down a level 
Just push back in for me. So we might go to C3 this time. It depends on which one's the worst one we focus on the most. And what can happen is too is sometimes it's very tender on that spot. We might have to shift over to the left or over to the right of that vertebrae. So we're on the same level, but I might move instead of the prime spice press, I might move on to here and push around on the transverse part of it and move that around. So for this part, instead of being there, I might shift to the right. She still pushes back. Get that pressure on pound, that's it. And then when she rotates around, I'll have to be on the right hand side here to really push that around and get a way more movement out on that side if she's too sore to push on the middle side. We usually go for the center, but sometimes we have to go on the side, it depends on which side she's sore. So that's gonna help her after we've done sets and sets and sets and sets of that. When she rotates left, you'll find that there's actually more range going to the left, which she can maintain, and that usually corresponds to less pain through here. And if there's less pain going down through here, these muscles are not as sore either. So it's a crucial part of our neck treatment is to try and improve the range. And that's one of the little tricks we can do physio-wise that helps the patient in the clinic and then allows them to do homework so they can be sent home, they maintain that range, do some exercises, so they come back better again, we get better as fast as we can. All right, see you next time.